G'day, today on the bench we're going to be taking a look at the Chinese Curve Tracer. I was a little bit worried this might turn up with a broken display, but it looks like we're sweet. Well the first thing I want to do is rip it apart and have a look inside, just in case there's any safety concerns, right? I don't want to switch it on and get a good shock off this thing. I've reviewed a few products where they don't even connect the earth, so you know, just want to make sure I'm safe. This is the oscilloscope section of the Curve Tracer. The only ICs on this board are op amps. There's four LF353Ns. So if something was to go wrong with this board, it'd be a pretty easy fix. Wires are soldered directly to the board, which could make it a bit painful if you need to get it out. Check this out. They couldn't even get the relay in straight. The top relay's a bit wonky too. It looks way worse in person than on camera. Looking at the horizontal and vertical switches, they don't look too bad, and there's a little bit of Loctite on the nuts. The switches are quite clicky, and they have nice indentations. I've just labelled all the ICs and the bigger transistors there, just for the future, just in case, because I don't have a schematic, so it might come in handy. I guess I'll have a bit of a hunt around on the internet and uh, see what I can find out because it'd be good to know what all these trimmers do as well in case I want to calibrate the thing later on. This board's responsible for our um, step generator. Anyway, doesn't look too bad. Let's move on. All right, so we got ourselves a transformer here and all the secondary uh, outputs on this thing go down to a bunch of diodes here. And yeah, you can see great care's been put to uh, neatly place them in, not. The capacitors in this unit are all of the brand Chang, right throughout. Here we've got a bunch of linear regulators, 24 volt, 15 volt, 12 volt, and 5 volt. A couple of transistors here and a little op amp as well. On the other side of the power supply board, we've got three little neon lamps. I'm guessing that they're for over voltage protection for the CRT, but if you know, leave the answer in the comments below. We've got two more of those MPN transistors on the end as well, the D880Ys. Looks like these uh, wires labelled 500 volts have been chafing on that sharp metal. Nice one. And here up the front we've got our variable transformer and there's quite a bit of corrosion on that wiper arm and there seems to be a little bit of flex in it too. So here's our series resistance. We've got half an ohm, 2.5, 10, 50 and 250 ohms in the big ones. Then we've got 1, 5, 25, 100 and 500 K directly on the back of the switch. And here we've got a board full of relays. This just selects our voltage ranges and switches between AC and DC on the device under test. Here's a quick look at the CRT. I guess if something like the heater in this failed, um, I'm not sure if it's a generic tube or not, but if you know, let us know in the comments below. Underneath the unit, we've got two test points. The test fixture can be removed and I'm fairly certain that there's a high voltage one available out there somewhere. Might look into getting one and do a review on it later on. I'll quickly go over to some of the controls. We've got our power switch, intensity knob, trace rotation and focus. Here we have four push buttons which select the peak voltage going to the collector or drain of your device under test. Each one has its own current range starting at 10 amps all the way down to 100 milliamps. There's an invert push button depending on the polarity you need. There's also an AC-DC switch next to this. The variable collector control is labelled as a percentage and it is a percentage of the voltage range that you have selected. Next we have our series resistance control to limit the current to the device under test. There's vertical and horizontal controls just like you'd find on an analog oscilloscope. There's also a magnification button, position and invert controls. Below we've got a bunch of options for our step generator and basically it, it depends if you're going to be looking at FETs or BJTs. Uh, we've also got a knob there which is the number of steps so we'll have a look at that in a minute. The three push buttons 1, 10 and 100k which I believe are series resistance on the base or gate. Here's the Zena diode. You can see now we've hit the forward bias region and if I keep cranking it up, you'll see we hit the Zener region. My particular unit didn't come with test fixtures, but I'll make some up on a PCB soon. It'll make it a lot easier and less janky than this. Here's two MPN transistors being compared. I had to slow my shutter speed right down. Alright, so I'm going to go and make some test fixtures for this Curve Tracer. If there's anything you'd like to see in the next video, please leave it in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.